This is the most influential franchise in Nickelodeon history, and it ain't SpongeBob or Fairly Odd Parents. Or uh, Jimmy Carl. <laughs> Jimmy Dean Char- I want to hang out with your mom, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy. Yeah, and I know what you're thinking Rugrats over yeah. all those. Baby. <laughs> baby. A, oh, baby. A baby's got to do. What a baby's got to do. 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 <laughs> <laughs> a baby's got to do what a baby's got to do. Yeah, this is perhaps the most well-researched episode we've ever done. Yeah, so strap strap in there, boys and girls. <laughs> I have done so much research on these dang babies. <laughs> Those dang kids. Without watching a single episode of Rugby. <laughs> yeah, that is true. You just kind of got baptized into the movie. Yeah, and, um, yeah, you guys made me watch the movie. You strapped me down. We forced, yes. Like in a clockwork orange. <laughs> yeah, we did the little eye things. <laughs> the reptar rap is seared into my brain. Yes, yeah, so you can hear nothing else. <laughs> I've seen like the history of Rugrats is almost kind of closely tied with like the history of like the Nickelodeon's boom. Yeah. It got started when uh, a bunch of parents were basically like, oh, these commercials are ruining our children. They're, they're turning their brains into mush. They want to buy Frosted Flakes and whatnot. Oh boy, if only they could see us now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, the guys over at Warner had the wonderful idea to make the world's first commercial free, children's only, TV network. <laughs> and then it was just downhill from there. All downhill from there. All the way. <laughs> yeah, so th- they basically rushed it out in a couple months. Like a Respect, they, yeah. Like like all of our videos. Yeah, like this whole channel. Yeah, it was supposed to be a loss leader uh, yeah. advertising, hey, uh, if you buy this, you get this network for free, basically. They somehow ended up settling on the name Nickelodeon. They The studio, or Warner, was originally kind of hes- hesitant, because like nobody really knows what it was, even at the time in like, the early seven, early 80s mm-hmm. and like it's kind of hard to pronounce especially for kids yeah but which is always what you want to go for when it's specifically kids programming yeah get something they cannot say during the opening sort of months and years of nickelodeon they kind of fumbled the sort of marketing towards kids because the original logo was just kind of a boring cursive font and was just like this old guy looking into like the end like it was an old nickelodeon no kid got the reference introducing nickelodeon Children's programming that's fit for children. 13 hours of programming a day, seven days a week, that will make them wonder, laugh, ponder, and think. But in the 80s, they got Fred and Alan incorporated to rebrand. They actually did the MTV rebrand, like beforehand. Music television. And so they hired them to do the Nickelodeon rebrand. Uh, Made it more poppy towards kids. And that's when we got the iconic orange and like the splat. And uh, the Jive Five that the, you know, the Nick, 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 the Nick, Nick, Nick. Nickelodeon. <laughs> <laughs> you have to pronounce that ick. I, I have to do the ick. Or else, well, <laughs> Honestly, we're going to get canceled. Yeah, definitely. What this might be the last episode. <laughs> In the 90s, we got the very first three cartoons from Nickelodeon, which were Oh, l- l- let me guess. You got okay, it. Rugrats. Rugrats one. Because we're talking about it. Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. Because it was the early one. Rocco's Modern Life. Is yeah. that true? Did yeah. I get that? How, how did you get hey, that? Hey, wow. look at that. I lived through it. <laughs> I was there 3,000 years ago. <laughs> you were you witnessed it with your own two eyes. Yeah. <laughs> there was there was a lot of like behind the scenes sort of drama and discourse behind. I the feel first like few that's always been the case when it comes to Nickelodeon. There's always been high turnover. <laughs> yeah, and all, they did not like Angelica. Okay, I gotta be honest. Angelica's based. Yeah. She's the best character in the whole <laughs> series. Huh? Merchandise, Pinky. I remember seeing even the voice actors for Angelica didn't want the character to be too harsh of a bully. I get that, but you know, we that's why it was smart to make her kind of a bully because she's funny and she has a heart, but she also is just like couldn't care less about the kids, you know. The writers and the creators had lots of clashing until Paul Germain, I think he left and took most of the writers with them and they had to get new writers. I think after the first movie, or after they did the first like 65 episodes. Wow, that, yeah. that's a statement, the first 65? Yeah, How I think, many seasons did Rugrats run? Uh, nine, nine, I believe. Wow. Yeah, after all that like sort of discourse and drama behind the scenes, how did the movie turn out? 
Well, that's a good question because you actually have never seen any of the Rugrats yeah. until you saw this movie. Yeah. And we forced you to watch this movie. Yeah. Um, so what did you think about that? Yeah, the first one's I, not great. I'll, yeah. say, <laughs> I'll, I'll beat you to the punch on that one. It's not the best. Oh, it's my first time getting to do this. But what's the plot? So Tommy Pickles is getting a little baby brother, or they think it's a sister, but it's a brother. And they name him Dill because they hate him. And, or they love him but they too love much. him a little too much yeah and so it's basically boss baby if you've ever seen that um, but not as good where but not as wacky and like acid trippy um where tommy and the gang feels like dill is really just annoying so they're gonna yeet this guy out into the woods and let the wolves handle him um so they do that but they get trapped in like a little reptar mobile which was always cool when i was a kid a little less cool as an adult because it just has like there's a bunch of stuff on it that, by the way, would be awesome if it existed. Like, like a flamethrower. And a raft. Yeah. Yeah. That Those babies cool. would be unstoppable with that. And that's all I'm saying. But yeah, that's pretty much the plot. They're trying to get rid of Dill, but then, of course, Tommy comes to figure out that, oh, Dill's not that bad. Yeah. And it was the introduction to the character of uh, Dill Pickles. Hmm. Yeah, like, uh, from what, like, everyone else said who has watched Rugrats, it just felt like a long episode. Yeah. And to me, it kind of felt like a... The 30 minute episode kind of stretched out into an hour and a half. Yeah, a little bit. It, it dragged a lot and, and it, towards the foresty parts, I think. Yeah, I think it, it almost feels like there's two different writers or something because the first one feels much more like what the show was. And then the second one is like, oh, what if we threw the, the gang into the woods and they had to survive until their parents could find them yeah. and it just feels kind of out there for rugrats yeah and and there was like a little bit of like the indiana jones stuff at the beginning that's a lot more what the show was like it was a little bit more like you're watching their adventures what they think is happening and then from mm. angelica's viewpoint you see they're just stupid babies running around you know annoying her mm. and that was always fun seeing that dichotomy not a lot in, in the movie yeah it was mostly just like baby survivor <laughs> and not as fun as that because i know that sounds really fun i know we're gonna do this <laughs> <laughs> i know what we're gonna do today <laughs> the characters were kind of cool though i like the okay. parents and um chucky. tommy oh, oh. Chuck. who's your favorite rugrat we got to get that up i love me some chucky just because i was basically chucky i kind of i kind of like tommy tommy's great yeah yeah like He's basically gonna kill his little brother. <laughs> Pretty much all of them were gonna like have a pact to kill. Him. Yeah. <laughs> I like uh, Phil and Lil in this movie. Mm. They do these weird angles on them that are just so funny because <laughs> they'll just like Dutch angle like up at them with like three chins, and uh, Phil will just be like, "Soft feet prints like that in our storybook. A wolf made him, and then he ate that little red riding girl. A wolf ate a girl. Uh, they got her out." In my research, I saw it was super popular in like the 18 yeah. to like 25 demographic, I think. And really? I was like, wow. That would be us. us yeah. Watching Rugrats. If, we if we were our age in like the 80s or 90s, we'd be watching Rugrats. Time machine. Wow. Yeah. Like it's hard to sort of imagine Rugrats being as big as SpongeBob as it was because like they had their true. own Thanksgiving floats. They had, they're basically the mascots of Nickelodeon back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it, it was what, like nine years before SpongeBob? Yeah. A, uh, a good chunk before Spongebob. So. Like 91 to... Spongebob started in 99, right? Yeah, something like that. So yeah, like 90s. a good... Yeah, and, and that just goes to show you, like, Nickelodeon had a lot of good ideas, but, you know, as, as we see today, it, maybe they... Kind of not a lot of great execution on them. Yeah, that's what it looks like. For their first, like, animated movie... Yeah, like theatrically... It, was this the third theatrical Nickelodeon movie? This is the third one right after... Good Burger. Right after Good Burger, What was yeah. the one before that? It's like, I can imagine the poster. It's like a girl holding up a magnifying glass, and she's like, ooh. Harriet the Spy? Is what yeah, I was a Disney kid, just full disclosure, so... I, I, I watched a lot of Nickelodeon, too, but, you know, there, there was a, a dip in quality faux show when yeah. I was a kid. And yeah. at that dip, Disney Channel was having a... Yeah, and rise. you can kind of feel it too with like the rise and fall of Rugrats as real. Yeah, definitely. But I was more of a Cartoon Network boy in the early oh, 2000s. That's what's wrong with you. Ben 10, Chowder, that Adventure Time. I'm too old. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was a SpongeBob kid. I'll say that. SpongeBob mm. all the way. So, yeah, for Rugrats though, the first big animated Nickelodeon feature film in theaters yeah. in 1998. 1998. Didn't hate it. <laughs> I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I, it was basically a long episode. Yeah, I didn't hate it. 
Yeah. Like it just kind of. I do hate that that was the first uh, thing we baptized you into with Rugrats. I wish we could have done Paris, and and we're about to. Like starting off with this, I kind of don't get the hype. Like I don't kind of get why this is Nickelodeon's flagship for like a, all those years. Right. And why it was such a big thing back in the '90s. But hopefully, I will with. In Paris? Yeah, you don't have a choice. You're Rugrats gonna... in Paris. Yeah, Rugrats in Paris is the one. Trust me. Trust me. All right. And we yeah. should also like give you a couple episodes. All right. Watch. Leave in the comments what episodes of Rugrats I should watch. Yeah. What are the quintessential Rugrats? See you guys on the next episode? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs>